Welcome to the Hey, I'm Kenny Anderson with The Men's Room. Thanks for joining us today. You know, The Men's Room comes to you from time to time and we really focus on three things, race, religion, and relationships. And today will be no different. What's really exciting about today is that we have some really special guests with us. We're gonna introduce them at this time. Botali is visiting with us. She's uh, owner of Black Pearl Entertainment. Hello, I'm Miss Botali Williams and I am the CEO of Black Pearl Entertainment. I'm from Alabama by way of Atlanta, Georgia, and I am in the men's room. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's really exciting to have you. We're always looking for that female perspective, so we know that you'll lend that to us today. Be ready for it. All right. Yeah. Tasha Love Strong, we want to thank you for being here today also. You're from Huntsville and we're one of our home girls, so we're glad to have you with us today too. I'm glad to be here. Hello, I'm Latarsha Love Strong. I'm Huntsville maid. I'm the owner, lead stylist of Chemistry The Salon here in Huntsville, and I am in the men's room. Looking for that female perspective, so you're gonna bring it, right? Absolutely. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You guys ready? Are you I'm ready? ready. You ready? You shut it up. Okay. All right. You can't get down. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's hit it then. You're in a relationship and you decide to get married. So what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. So in a marriage, when we talk about the whole idea about combining a household, is there anything off the table? Money, children, sex. Tasha, you're married, right? Sure. You got a secret stash or is all the money together? Um, it, for my household, um, we just prefer to have separate accounts. It works better. Um, however, um, he doesn't make any major decisions, and I don't make any major, you know, major decisions without asking him. You have to come to an agreement in, in the beginning and just say, this is what it is. But for us, it works better. It's, it's, it's 2014. Right. <laughs> and um, I, I don't think what, we what have the that, same, I, I don't think we have the same values as um, our grandparents and um, our great grandparents. Women are are coming into marriages with college degrees and hundred thousand dollar jobs now or or more. So you have to you know have to factor that in. So I think that um, hidden money, like like I said, I, it's it's no hidden money in my household because I have my own account and he has his own account. So when he opens his statement, he only knows what's in his statement, and I only know what's in my statement. So it works better. But we came into it like that. So I'm okay with hidden money. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm okay with it. You're like it's a new deck. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's now. yeah. It it's is. just it's it's not like you know the 1950s. You know where we're at home and just you know fixing hot water bread. We're not doing that. Yeah. So, I see everybody shaking their head like they're in agreement. I'm yeah. in agreement. Am I the only dissent in this group? Am I the only one that says that hidden money presents a problem? Am I the only one feeling that way? You probably are. Right. a problem, like she said, depending on how you come into the relationship. Yeah. If you came into it and said, hey, babe, we're going to do this together and blah, 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 then I can see if I'm stashing $200 or whatever we decide and he finds out about it. I can I can understand why he would be upset about that. But if you, if you come into it agreeing, I'm going to have mine, you're going to have yours, let's make sure these bills get paid. As long as the bills are paid, we good. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, you keep all. moving forward. Let me ask you this, Mark. Let me ask you this. She makes more money than you. Tasha, put it out there. Women go into relationships now. 50, 60 large, more than what you make. Is that okay for you? You're single. You're still on the market. Hey. She comes up to you, man, she's making a hundred large, man. Is that cool? Is that good? You all right with that? Be honest. I have no problem with her making more money than me, but still, I need to be respected as the man of the house. Which means I, I don't need, in an argument, I don't need that to be held over my head. So you want your ego struggle? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ego stroked. Okay. In essence, when, when things get heated, and you say, "Well, that's why you want to make thirty thousand dollars a year," <laughs> you know, that that makes a man who's supposed to be wearing the britches in the house feel about this big. Mm -hmm. Now, some on the outside looking in might say that that's unfair, but in in a union, you have to build each other up. He, he probably needs, and, and it's a shame. But flip it. Like I hear you talking. But what if she's the stay-home mommy 
you, you get it and yeah. you're making all the money and she decides she needs to go do this and she has to ask this money for you or she may not be doing something properly around the house and you done got a little frustrated and she says baby I need to go and get this or I need this for myself and then you like I'm making all this money you ain't doing all this and blah 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 I'm gonna need you like I hear you saying like I know men need their ego stroke and they want to feel a certain way because they're the man regardless of who's making the money got that but there's always the flip side of it. Mm -hmm. Flip it. And then you'll understand how we feel when we're making that money. And we feel like, yeah. You know, because the man is supposed to handle the house. Regardless. But times have changed. So here we go, everybody. We have an interesting situation. And, um, you know, this is, this is real interesting to me because it's hot now today. And uh, I think we see this a lot. And um, I'm, I'm real interested to see what you guys have to say about this. So Ms. Votel, I want to uh -oh. come right at you with this question. Uh -oh. And the situation is your spouse cheats mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. So do you give them another chance? I have. You have? Okay. Yeah, my ex did and I did. But I was young and dumb at that time. Now I'm very mature. Okay. So by <laughs> so, saying young and dumb, was it was it a situation to where you you were just naive, or were you kind of you know? Um, that's all I knew was my first boyfriend, my first sex partner, my okay. first baby daddy. You know, like so um, there was just this attachment, mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't ready to let go. You know, because that's all I knew. So I did. I, I gave him another chance, um, but it didn't work. Um, it is true. Once a cheater, always a cheater. And he just continued to do the same things over and over again. At this time in my life, no, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I mean, if you want something else, go for it. So, Kenny, how about you? Would, would you say you would give your spouse Ab another chance? Absolutely. Um, I married my spouse for richer or for poor in sickness and in health till death do us part. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's that easy. Right. Right. And that's simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a very complex situation. Right. And I think that a marriage can survive infidelity with the right things happening. That sounds real good, Ken. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I know what the right thing to do is. Be patient. But when you are in that situation, I had a girlfriend cheat on me. And it just kept replaying in my mind. I thought I was like on the best man when they were at the altar and all they could see was her biting my shoes. I'm not egotistical, but that male ego kicked right in. Of course. And I was like, I wish this could stop replaying in my mind. Lord, let me find a plug, circuit breaker or something, and just turn it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. The trust is gone. Yeah. You know? so, so that's a situation where it's, it, it's no need to be together anymore once all of that's taking place. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because every day is a constant fight. Well, well, see, when, when the man's ego gets bruised like that, all of a sudden the cable guy's guilty, the milkman's guilty, right. the mailman's guilty, right. your co-workers over there eyeing like you, I know y'all doing something, <laughs> uh -huh, I know your trainer, he's checking you out. Absolutely. And I don't want, I don't want to live I like went through that. I, I, I started to do those those deals, those type of things, and it just made the relationship worse, you know. So outside of him cheating and not, you know, stopping, quitting cheating, I just, every little thing was an issue for me. I, I, she agrees with me. I, I agree with, with, with Kenny. I think that um, if it's, it's something repetitive and, and I, I keep catching you, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a problem. Because my thing is, I'm not going to look for it. So it's, it's going to have to just show itself. Right. Because what's done in the dark is going to come to light. Mm -hmm. But I do right. feel as if that, in my opinion, and I just this is just my opinion, I feel that every man in, in, in a situation is going to cheat. Okay, folks, we are at the lightning round. And if you thought the previous topics were, were juicy, this one's going to be the juiciest, I can guarantee you. I hope you got a fire extinguisher, because that's going to be some fireworks. Okay, we're going to start with the ladies. Botel. Yes. When a man cheats, is it ever the woman's fault? When a man cheats, is it ever the woman's fault? It could be. Um, it could be. Yes. I mean, you talking about his significant other? His significant other. No. Okay. Well, I mean, never. Never. He's saying never. Never. The question is. This is the <laughs> <laughs> no, I got the answer. Never. 
is she doing everything at home mm. and he just wants to go out and cheat? Or yeah, it's kind of is this, I mean, like, because if, if I'm not doing what I need to do at home, I can look at this being made like, I mean, I was at fault for that, like, because I should have been doing, but at the end of the day, no. Okay, like, let, 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 it's, not, it's not our fault. You tell me what you want me to do. Well, let it's me, like I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. Let me package it in that same scenario. Okay, whether this is right or wrong, mm -hmm. while we were dating, we had the intimacy thing going on, mm -hmm. you know. We we had some some good loving going on. Yeah, but you see, you're not doing but, all this stuff no more, though. But when we you know, when we became you know when, 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 right. when we, when we became an idol, you know. when we became an idol, yeah. the intimacy slowed down. Uh -huh. So again, with that being said, uh -huh. is the woman ever to blame? No. In a situation like that? No. 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 I, I think Mr. Yeah. I think Mr. Kenny Anderson really wants to take a stab. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Anderson, I want you to go in. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say this one more time, just in case you didn't hear it the first thirty times I asked the question. When a man <laughs> cheats, a or when he's mind. pushed, when he feels that he's pushed to cheat, no. well, notice how I set that up. Push is no is it ever the woman's fault? I agree. No man's ever pushed to cheat. A uh, person that cheats, cheats because they choose to cheat. Right. So it's not the person, it's never the other person's fault. No. And that's one of the biggest problems. If I'm not taking personal, personal responsibility for my life. Yeah, because somebody is or is not doing something. It's easy for me to point the finger and blame somebody and say, you made me do something. No, you made a choice to do what you yeah. did. So I don't think it's ever the woman's fault that a guy cheats. Okay. Never. Okay, so Kenny. Be, uh, during the, the dating get to know phase, you know, uh, there was this physical thing going on. Yeah. Now you're an item. Now she wants to be selling. Well, I don't have a problem with that if you're not married. Because, um, are you saying they're married or not married? If they're not no, married, no, she's not married. To, okay, they're not married, she wants to be selling, but that's good because the word of God says that that's exactly what should happen. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, keeping, I'm keeping it real when I say that too because either the word of God is or is not. I mean, that's the bottom line. Either I'm going to stand on it or I'm not going to stand on it. So then I have to say that um, if the person is choosing to be celibate, that's the right choice. There's no problem with that. Now, now the problem is already been set up, though, because they were getting down before. before. Yeah. So there are going to be some problems with that. But just because I've been doing something wrong doesn't mean I need to continue to do something wrong just to justify the relationship that I'm in. And I have every right to say that I don't want to do it no more. Okay. But you're going to have to work through some things. While we're on the subject <laughs> with uh, folks giving it up, uh -huh. um, Dr. Huxtable, a.k.a. William Bill Cosby, the star of many movies in the 70s, uh, the, the, the Cosby Show, uh -huh. you know, America's number one dad. Everyone's dad. All of a sudden, everybody's coming out the woodwork. Man. And, uh, you know, from the 60s on up to the present day, saying that uh, he did X, Y, and Z. Okay, so my question is, do you think that some of them are trying to play the victim now? I don't understand why they're coming out. Why, why, why now? Yeah. Why now? Yeah, why now? Yeah. And what, are you, what are you trying to gain from you, it? What now? 15 minutes of fame? A little to money? be relevant? No, 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 mind you, no, mind you, uh, no man should get away with committing sexual assault that's if that's right. what okay, happened. That's, that's but there happened. is a difference between being a bimbo and, and being sexually assaulted. Yeah, because yeah. they say in Hollywood you got to do X, Y, and Z to get to where you want to go. And some of those girls were willing to do Whatever anything mm -hmm. to do. And this is my take. Sometimes the desired result does not come, and now all of a sudden somebody feels you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Not not letting Cosby off the hook. I mean, if he did it, he did it. But right now, statute of limitations, nobody can prove anything. Yeah. But but Bo, what do you think it does to his legs? It diminishes it. Like I, I just feel like everything he's built. Like you mm -hmm. said, he was everyone's dad. They were uh, the black family we all wanted mm -hmm. to be a part of. Um, and to have these women come out and say these things about him, to me it was disheartening. I was really sad about it, but um, there's his side, 
her side in the mm -hmm. truth. But I hate yeah. that they, they did it now. It, did you stop giving them money? Like, my question is, like, did you stop? Well, the box, he, he paid for this one young lady's uh, tuition. He had uh, a third party write checks for some of these ladies. I mean, it's gotten so bad now, it's like, Herman Cain and Tiger Woods said, God, ladies, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so Kenny, <laughs> let me ask you, why isn't Cosby saying anything, man? What's up? How come he's not coming out defending himself? Would you? I'm going to, yeah, I would. I guarantee you, if I was accused of rape and I was not a rapist, yeah. I would unequivocally say, I am not a rapist. Mm -hmm. And there'd be nothing anybody could do about it. Now, just like the statute of limitations is worn out for any kind of prosecution, it's worn out for him too. I mean, if he comes in and says, I'm not a rapist, what is he doing? He's not subjecting himself to anything. Mm -hmm. He's simply standing on his truth. And the problem is that he's standing there looking in the camera talking about. I don't want to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's some embarrassment because the world was not supposed to know that he was that type of person. Mm -hmm. That's understood, but being that type of person does not mean that you committed a crime. And you're not embarrassed if you didn't do it. You're not That's the whole if you point, you deny so it. Chris, you say, I didn't do it. he's not coming out and denying it? Because he's an old man. <laughs> What's that okay. guy doing? What that guy doing in the old man, what does that mean? Old men like to stop and think before they speak. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> <Today>. Okay. <laughs> now, see, this is a very, this is a very, very electric topic, and man, I wish we could talk 100 hours about it but man just found out Ferguson Missouri mm -hmm. officer Darren Wilson uh, was uh, they came out and said that he is innocent Wow. okay wow. so as far as justice confidence and peace going forward Kenny where do we begin Pray. Yeah, that's a good place to start because I don't, I don't have the answer. I mean, um, it's another situation that America and the world have watched in which it appears that a young, unarmed black man lost his life uh, to a police officer. Yeah. And so, you know, I, you know, I don't know, where, where do you begin? Where do we begin when Trayvon Martin was killed? You know, where, where, where do we begin with Jordan Davis was killed? You know, this line of young black men who have consistently been killed, um, I'm not sure where you begin. Um, I know part of the answer has to be in relationships within the community that are enhanced between law enforcement and the public. Not, it's not just having to talk with our young men, because once they have to talk, once we have to talk with our young men, they got to go out on the street. They gotta live and they have to survive. Mm -hmm. So you also have to have a parallel education process going on in law enforcement where there's an understanding of young black men. They aren't all thugs, they aren't all out to rob you, kill you, unlike Rudy Giuliani and the kinds of things that he's been saying about yeah. why there's so many police officers out on the street in the black community. I mean, and, and that, that's a great point you make, Kenny. And, and uh, Chris, I mean, what do you tell these young men who are the future? And they see all of this going on. They see all these atrocities going on in the community. And the, the a collective feeling is that justice, of course, hadn't been, been served. Yeah. You know, the, and, and people have said the justice system and justice aren't even related. So what, what do you tell young kids? It's, it's, it's difficult because I think that um, situations like this create a, a violent mindset, you know, and in uh, the younger generation. And they look at the system and they say, the system doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> at what point does the, the people feel like the system worked for them? Because I think that that has to, to switch. Something has to happen to where they kind of, you know, will respect the system. You know, um, you, you can look at a situation like I had a, a guy that came into my barber shop and he's a, a police officer, but he talks about things like, the jails and everything is, is it's all about money. Mm -hmm. And so if, if the situation is where the jails are full, you know, these guys can go out and do what they do and they really can't keep you in the jails. It's kind of like they put you back out here. And so that never becomes like a, a respect for the system, respect for society. But, you know, to your question about what we can do is, you know, we can, we can continue to do the community type, you know, things, you know, to continue to build up and try to, help the young people to still 
have a you know an expectation of a of a better future. Yeah, I think the community the community thing is always important. You can never do enough community work. But Bo, do you think that? Uh, and, and not just talking about the situ situation abroad in the United States, but in Ferguson, do you think that hiring more African American police officers may help quell that situation? Yeah, I've never been to Ferguson. I don't know how big or how small it is. And I've only seen what I've seen on the news. And yeah, I think more African American police officers do need to be hired in, in such areas like that. I don't believe what Giuliani said earlier about um, most of the crimes in black areas, black people killing one another. I, I, no, no, I don't. I have three boys. And I'm gonna tell y'all, before um, I got here, I texted my, all my children, I had five, and I said, I don't know what this verdict is gonna be today, but be careful. Because mm -hmm. not just in Ferguson, mm -hmm. but everywhere, people That's are gonna right. act up. Right. Just stay home for the night for me. And I, I don't, I shouldn't have to say that yeah. to my boys, That's to my right. children. Darren Wilson pulled the trigger with America shot, giving him permission to legally connive me. But I'm not alive to tell my side But with God, with innocence, he will find me America shot me I, I speak for the people Say we have rights, but we know they ain't equal Welcome to the Living in the genocide, all the way from the corporations to the enterprise. I will never give up till I see a finish line. My body and soul, I got them all intertwined. America shot me, and I, and I ain't had no weapon beside me.